so now we're going to talk about um, the dysfunction of peripheral nerves in um, uh, different uh, neuropathies and different types of neuropathies. So the learning objectives for um, this section are to be able to distinguish between the different types of neuropathies, mo mononeuropathies, multiple mononeuropathies, and polyneuropathies, and to be able to name an example of each, and we'll talk about those. Um, I want you to know the signs and symptoms and pathology and etiology for carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a pretty common um, peripheral nerve um, dysfunction. Although the surgery for carpal tunnel, uh, sur uh, carpal tunnel syndrome is so much easier than it ever used to be, very small incisions now and people recover in a couple days and go back to work, which is really nice. So um, with dysfunctional peripheral nerves, um, when you have peripheral nerve damage, it can include sensory changes, autonomic changes, and motor changes. All of these changes, all the signs, are show up in a peripheral nerve distribution. So sensory changes can be decreased or abnormal sensation like hyperalgesia, dysesthesia, and paresthesia. So remember, hyperalgesia is that um, extra sensitivity. Dysesthesia is painful abnormal sensation, and paresthesia is non-painful abnormal sensation. So it could be numbness, tingling, um, electrical or zapping feelings for dysesthesia, um, just high, uh, heightened sensitivity. Um, autonomic changes um, happen only if the nerve is completely severed. And usually what you see um, for autonomic changes is lack of sweating uh, and edema secondary to the loss of sympathetic control of smooth muscle. Um, motor changes that you can see with um, dysfunctional peripheral nerves are paresis or paralysis, uh, muscle atrophy from denervation, and fibrillation. Remember, fibrillation is always pathological. So the sensory changes include decrease or loss sensations. So hyperalgesia, dysesthesia, paresthesia, or allodynia, where a normally non-painful stimulus is painful. Um, the autonomic changes are going to depend on the pattern, and so usually the signs are only observed if the nerve is completely severed. So um, problems may include problems re regulating blood pressure, depending on where the um, dysfunction is, um, problems regulating heart rate, sweating, bowel and bladder functions, and impotence. So obviously if you have a single um, peripheral nerve, you're not going to get some of those central systems, but in the spinal um, region chapter, we'll talk a little bit more about those other autonomic symptoms. So when the nerve supply is interrupted, you start to get trophic changes in the denervated tissues, which include muscle atrophy, um, the skin becomes shiny, um, nails become brittle, and subcutaneous tissues thicken. So it changes the look of the um, the tissue itself. You can also get ulceration of cutaneous and subcutaneous tissues. So um, the either the um, uh, internal or external ulcers. Um, it can cause poor healing of wounds and infections, and you can eventually end up with neurogenic joint damage. Um, secondary to blood supply changes, loss of sensation, and lack of movement. And of course you're going to get decreased sensation and circulation. Um, peripheral neuropathy can involve a single nerve, several nerves, or many nerves. So um, mononeuropathy is um, a lesion involving a single nerve. It's usually caused by focal compression um, due to entrapment or prolonged pressure. Um, it's considered a focal dysfunction. Entrapment is most common in the median nerve at the carpal tunnel, um, the ulnar nerve at the ulnar groove, the radial nerve at the spiral groove, and um, the peroneal nerve at the fibular head. So um, pr prolonged pressure from casts, um, braces, crutches, or sustained positions, like sitting on your foot or sitting with your um, knees crossed, um, can compress your nerves. So um, compression temporarily interferes with blood supply or in the case of prolonged compression it can cause local demyelination. So a lot of times um, with carpal tunnel syndrome 
you have prolonged pressure and you do get local demyelination, which is what causes your, the, the uh, signs and symptoms in carpal tunnel. Um, compression interrupts the blood supply, causing local demyelination, which slows or prevents nerve conduction. So um, that's, a, that's a big deal, <laughs> right? So a multiple uh, neuropathy involves two or more nerves in different parts of the body. Um, so it's multifocal. It's most commonly caused by ischemia of nerves from diabetes or inflammation of blood vessels. A recovery is usually good but slow due to the slow rate of axonal regrowth. And there's, there tends to be a random um, asymmetrical presentation of signs. Polyneuropathy um, involves many nerves. It's symmetrical involvement of sensory, motor, and autonomic fibers. It's a, it's a uh, generalized disorder that typically has a distal symmetrical um, presentation. So it often progresses from distal to proximal, and they call it a sock and glove presentation. So you can imagine, socks and gloves, that's where the symptoms first start to show up. So um, with mononeuropathies, you can have um, traumatic injury to the nerves, and um, various types of trauma might injure the nerves, so compression or severance. Depending on the severity of the damage, um, traumatic injuries to peripheral nerves are classified into three categories. Um, traumatic myelinopathy is loss of myelin limited to, to one site of injury. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome is um, usually no damage to the axon, just demyelination in initial stages. And once you relieve the pressure, you can get complete rapid recovery and remyelination. Um, traumatic axonopathy disrupts axons, and you can actually get uh, Wallerian degeneration occurring distal to the lesion. The nerve is crushed, the axon is disrupted, but the Schwann cell connective tissue sheath is intact, even though the axon breaks apart. Um, the myelin sheath pulls away, pre- and postsynaptic terminals degenerate, you get muscle fiber atrophy. Um, intact connective sheaths sheaths can direct axon sprouting toward the correct target. So remember, axons regrow at a rate of one millimeter a day, but even with traumatic axonopathy, if the connective tissue sheath is intact, you have good recovery potential. With severance, um, nerves are physically divided by excessive stretch or laceration. Um, axon and connective tissue are completely disrupted, causing immediate loss of function. So usually sprouting begins within three days of the injury. Some sprouts may enter the target, target tissue, but some might get lost, um, growing into a neuroma, which is a tangled mass of nerve fibers. And so um, recovery is variable on this, depending on what happens with the regrowth. So here's, um, here's the uh, traumatic myelinopathy. You, the black is the myelin. It's a myelin stain. Um, in peripheral myelinopathies interfere, interfere with the function of large diameter axons because remember those large diameter heavily myelinated axons um, transmit fast signals so you can get that focal compression of a peripheral nerve or repeated mechanical stimulus can also cause focal compression so like um, having to use a vibrating tool in your work like a router or something like that um, carpal tunnel syndrome is a common compression injury of the median nerve um, and in the space between the carpal bones and the flexor retinaculum, and it causes traumatic myelinopathy. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome is more prevalent in people whose occupations require working on, in a cold environment or the gripping of vibrating tools. So um, that uh, it's there's surgery for it, obviously. Um, I've had some good luck uh, treating early carpal tunnel syndrome um, with uh, Graston technique, the um, tool-assisted soft tissue mobilization, um, and you uh, treat the transverse carpal ligament to free up some space in there. That's the whole idea. Surgically, they um, sever the transverse carpal ligament to, again, free up space. So. With um, traumatic axonopathy, 
um, that is the one that has sort of the least um, potential for regeneration. Um, as long as long as the myelin and connective tissues are intact, you have a better potential for it. But axonopathies affect all sizes of axons, and um, reflexes, somatosensation, and motor functions are significantly reduced or absent. And the severance, again, you're gonna. Um, it depends on how the um, nerves regrow, um, whether they're guided to their tar target tissue accurately. How you recover. So multiple um, mononeuropathies, it's two or more nerves in different parts of the body. Um, vasculitis, which is um, vascular inflammation basically, can cause multiple mononeuropathy. Um, it's considered urgent and um, they uh, want you to go in for electrodiagnostic evaluation to figure out which nerves are affected. And the, one of the hallmarks of multiple neuropathy is the random asymmetrical presentation of signs. And the polyneuropathy, this is the picture of the sock and glove um, presentation. Um, symmetrical and involves sensory motor and autonomic fibers progressing from distal to proximal. Um, it usually appears in the hands and feet, which are um, areas of body supplied by, supplied by the longest axons. They're usually not the result of trauma or ischemia. They're usually toxic, metabolic, or autoimmune. Um, so the most common causes are diabetes, nutritional de um, deficiencies, um, particularly B12 deficiencies. Um, alcoholism can cause um, polyneuropathy and autoimmune diseases. So lots of different treatments depending on what the cause is. Um, but Different um, industrial and agricultural toxins and nutritional disorders can also cause polyneuropathies. So diabetic polyneuropathy is a um, special uh, <laughs> special uh, category of polyneuropathies. Axons and myelin are damaged in diabetic polyneuropathy. You get decreased sensation along with pain, paresthesia, and dysesthesia. Balance and strength training reduce risk for people um, and risk for falls with people with diabetic neuropathy and gait and balance improve with exercise. So um, we're not going to fix the axons and the myelin necessarily, but in um, PT we will frequently see people with diabetic polyneuropathy um, and we, we treat them with gait and balance training. Same with um, Charcot-Marie tooth disease, which is a hereditary motor and sensory uh, neuropathy, and Guillain-Barre, which is an acute autoimmune inflammatory polyneuropathy. So um, diabetes is the metabolic, um, Guillain-Barre is autoimmune, and Charcot-Marie tooth is um, genetic. So there's also idiopathic polyneuropathy. Um, Older people without diabetes can develop peripheral neuropathy. Um, among people over 60 with polyneuropathy, no cause can be identified in 10 to 18% of people. So um, if there's not an identifiable cause, it's harder to treat. But again, in PT, we're going to treat polyneuropathy um, with gait and balance training. And um, it does help people. So um, Guillain-Barre, a lot of times you get the paresis or paralysis, which um, is a lot of what we're treating um, people. As they recover, um, they can gain strength, which is great. The, the hard part about Guillain-Barre is that um, in the initial acute stage, one-third of patients um, require a ventilator. So getting um, prompt treatment is really important. And hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy is also known as Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease, or CMT. Um, the, one of the things, I mean, we can't change the fact it's a genetic disease, but we can teach um, people um, an exercise program. We can um, help them with assistive devices if they need it, and we can do gait and balance training. So usually therapy involves strengthening, stretching, conditioning, um, at joint muscle and skin protection. So a lot of education with um, CMT. So there are a couple, there are different um, dysfunctions of the neuromuscular junction. We talked about um, 
way back in one of the early chapters, Myasthenia gravis, it's an autoimmune disease that damages acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction and repeated use of a muscle leads to increasing weakness. So a lot of times the muscles that are affected are ones that we're using repeatedly like postural muscles and um, eyelid muscles because we're blinking. Um, so myasthenia gravis is treated um, with medication and um, a lot of times when people are recovering and getting stabilized on their meds, they come into PT to work on um, energy conservation, gait and balance training, and um, really kind of getting back to normal, getting back to where they were. Um, botulinum toxin or botulism can interfere with the release of acetylcholine at the motor axon. Um, so um, botulism, when it's um, take when you get it accidentally, it produces acute progressive weakness, loss of stretch reflexes, even though the sensation remains intact because it affects the neuromuscular junction. It doesn't affect sensory nerves. So, um, but we use Botox um, therapeutically to um, decrease muscle spasticity. So a lot of times post CVA or someone who has um, cerebral palsy or another um, disease, another chronic disease causing spasticity, they get Botox injections in the areas that are most affected by the spasticity, often um, hands, arms, feet, and lower legs. And um, the, it, the Botox does the same thing as, the, um, as botulism. It, um, interferes with the release of acetylcholine from the motor axon, so it decreases um, overactive motor system. So um, it can be a disease or it can be a cure. It's not really a cure, but it's a treatment. Myopathy um, describes disorders that are intrinsic to muscles, um, like muscular dystrophy. That's the, a good example of it. Um, usually it involves the um, motor end plate or the muscle, um, degeneration of muscle fibers, reduced force production, um, no sensory or autonomic loss, but it affects, um, it usually only affects muscle strength and coordination muscle tone and reflexes are not affected until the muscle atrophy becomes so severe that um, you cannot elicit any muscle activity. So, um, since they, the um, basically the the healthy muscle fibers get replaced by fat, and this is what this um, picture is showing. So the pink areas in there are the health, healthy muscle fibers within the um, bundles of muscle fibers, and the white areas are where it's been replaced by fat. So um, you get severe atrophy um, with this type of myopathy. So electrodiagnostic studies, which we've talked about in previous chapters, are used to um, determine and evaluate the dysfunction of peripheral nerves. Um, EMGs and nerve conduction studies often reveal the pathological um, location or diagnostic. Um, nerve conduction studies can be used to differentiate among the different types of neuropathies.